Have you heard that saying, you will own nothing and be happy? Yeah, well, it's becoming more true in 2024. Take a look. Wall Street Journal says that there's never been a worse time to buy a home versus rent. More Americans are financing their cars than before, and the average new car payment is at $726 a month. And on top of that, buy now, pay later is booming because Americans are okay financing their vacations to Cancun. Life has become much more expensive in just the last few years. And because of that, it's become more difficult to own things. And because it's more difficult to own things, more and more Americans are getting caught up in this payment scheme of, let me not own this thing, let me just pay to use this thing. And so now you get caught up in this payment scheme where you're paying money every single month when you actually don't own anything. Life has become much more expensive, especially in the last few years. And because life has become so much more expensive, Americans are deciding not to own things, not to own their home, not to own their car, not to even own their clothes, but instead pay to borrow these things. So now you're paying money every single month to have the nice things, but you actually own nothing and no one seems to think this is a big deal. In fact, our government just finished up a press tour talking about how the middle class is booming and how the economy is working for the middle class American. But there's a very important financial secret, which shouldn't be considered a secret, that I want you to understand, which is that there's a difference between owning and affording things and having nice things. Now I get it. It's much more difficult to own and afford things today, which I'm gonna highlight right now, but this is so important for you to understand if you ever want a chance to break away from what the majority of people are doing and build wealth for yourself, which is actually one of the reasons why on February 6th, 2024, I'm hosting my first ever wealth building workshop. I'm gonna be going over live, virtually, the different things that you can be doing right now in this economic system to start planning your money, to start building your wealth, to start generating cash flow, and put your money to work. This is a completely free workshop. I'm hosting two live sessions on February 6th, one in the morning Eastern time and one in the evening Eastern time. You can join me live where I'm gonna be going over for free the different things you need to understand and how you can start using your money as a tool. So if you'd like to join me on this workshop for free on February 6th, I hope you can join because it's gonna be a lot of fun. I got the link to how you can join down in the description below but just make sure you register soon because there's a limited number of people that can actually join me live. So I'd love to have you there, but I just need you to register for me. That way we can actually have a spot for you on this live workshop. So now let's jump into the numbers. In 2019, just a few years ago, the median household income in America was $68,700. The average price for a new car sold in America was $38,948. The average price for a home sold in America was $258,000. And the average price for a gallon of gas over the course of the year was $2.60. Now let's compare that to 2023. In 2023, the estimated household income is right around $76,000, which is an increase of 11% from 2019. In 2023, the average price for a new car sold was $48,247. That's an increase of 19% from 2019. In 2023, the average price of a home sold in America jumped up to $412,000. That's an increase of 60%. From 2019. And in 2023, the average price of a gallon of gas sold was $3.76 over the course of a year because you gotta remember, gas prices fluctuate a lot throughout the year. This is an increase of 44% from 2019. Now, the reason why I want you to understand this is because wages or household wages grew by 11% over these four years. But the prices of things that you need, like your car, your home and your energy have all grown significantly faster than people's incomes. Now, what do you do? Because when you have this much money, but your fixed costs for things like your car, your house, and your energy are growing faster than your income, that means more and more of your money is used to fund your necessary expenses. Things like your home, your car, and your energy, which leaves less money for your discretionary items. Things like your travel and your clothes and your eating out let alone your investments and your savings. So now you have to make a decision. If your cost of living, your necessities are more and more expensive, where are you gonna cut back? Are you gonna cut back now on living smaller, maybe having a smaller car, maybe going out and doing less things? Or are you gonna invest less money? Or are you gonna say, you know what? Why don't we just put this on our credit card? We'll just continue financing this because you know what? We don't wanna downsize our lifestyle. We're kinda of used to having a certain lifestyle and we don't wanna let go of some of our necessities. Which one are you gonna do? And for the average American, well, 
we've been seeing credit card debt break new record highs. Part of the reason is people don't want to let go of their certain lifestyles. People want to continue living this high and expensive lifestyle even if their incomes are not keeping up. But you got to understand, this trend is not slowing down. Maybe inflation is slowing down, but the cost of living is still growing faster than people's incomes, and that is gonna continue to happen. This has been happening for decades, but it really accelerated in these four years. And now we're not seeing deflation, we're seeing disinflation. Disinflation is inflation cooling down. And what that means is that the prices of things are still growing, just not as fast as they were before. So now when you have a few years of rapid price increases, now the prices start to grow a little bit slower. The prices of things are still growing, just not as fast as they were before. Which means that for the average person, well, your salaries can't buy you as much stuff as it could before. Bankrate actually did an interesting study on this in 2023, which was when inflation actually cooled down. And they said that in 2023, when inflation was cooling, 60% of Americans felt that their incomes did not grow fast enough to keep up with the cooling inflation. Now, if we compare that to the 2021 numbers and 2022 numbers, when we had higher inflation, the numbers are even more extreme, which means that for the average person, the high inflation outpaced your incomes, which means you're gonna to have to start changing what you do with your money if you ever wanna have a chance to become wealthy. If we take a look at the values of things that increased and decreased between 2019 and 2023, it helps you understand the real value of financial education because between those years, the things that lost value were things like your salaries. I'm not saying your salary is not important, but salaries did not keep up with inflation, which meant that your salary today for the average person has lost value relative to before the pandemic. In addition to that, savings too. Again, I'm not saying your savings are not important. You need to know how to save your money strategically, but the average person's savings did not keep up with inflation. Even if you kept your money in a high interest savings account for the last four years, the high inflation that we saw over the last four years outpaced the average savings rate even in a high interest savings account over the last four years. And I'm not even taking a look at other liabilities like your cars and your clothes because those lose value a whole lot faster than these things. These are things that lost value in the last four years. But if you take a look at the things that gained value in the last few years, well, that's things like stock values, real estate values, especially if you're a real estate investor, business values, business valuations, and other assets. So now the financially educated were able to see more gain because now you put your money into things like stocks or real estate or businesses or other assets. Now you saw the gains here versus the average person who's working to get a salary and save some money, they became poorer in this system even though you thought that you're doing things right. And now if you take a look at what's happening today, the cost of living has gone up so much, incomes haven't kept up. So now more and more Americans are not just turning to credit cards, but they're turning to things like buy now, pay later to finance their lifestyles. Well now you're playing a game where Americans don't even own their own liabilities. They're financing liabilities, but not just that, they're borrowing liabilities. They're not even working to own the liabilities, they're working to just borrow the liabilities. So now you're playing a game where instead of working to own assets, people are working to barely own liabilities. In fact, just working to pay to borrow liabilities, just so you can have it for a little bit of time. And so now all your money is going out to look like you're rich, but you don't even own the liabilities. But the game should be working to own assets, not to just borrow liabilities, because this is where the wealth is built. Now, of course, asset prices go up and down. We've seen market crashes happen. We saw market crash in 2020. We saw market crash in 2008. We saw market crash in 2000. Market crashes will happen again. But what we've seen is that throughout time, the people that become wealthy are the people that turn their money to own assets. It's not the people that work to just own liabilities or the work to borrow liabilities. You are the people that are making these people rich. So now if you want to get rich, you have to be an owner. And yeah, maybe you don't have to go out and own your home today or own your car today, although I am not an advocate of you financing a car ever. When it comes to owning things like assets, you got to understand how you can start owning them sooner rather than later. And when it comes to your home, this one's kind of a gray area because I would like you to own your home, but I don't want you to go deep into debt. I don't want you to go and stretch yourself financially to own a home. It is okay to rent a home, but you got to understand when it's right for you to go out and buy a home. Because as somebody who was a licensed realtor, I'm still a licensed realtor, but I don't work as a realtor. One of the things they teach you as a realtor is that your home is the biggest investment of your life. And when you're sold this pitch that the home that you live in is the biggest investment of your life, it's much easier to get you to buy a bigger and nicer home because it's an investment for you. It's an investment for your kids. It's an investment in this generational wealth. Well, if this home is an investment for you, 
and now you have no more money to invest into other assets. You have no more money to actually build real wealth. This home will end up turning into a money pit because now anytime something goes wrong, anytime you need maintenance, anytime you need a new roof, that's money coming out of your pocket that you'll never see again. Now you have to hope that you can sell your home for a profit, but when you sell your home for a profit, you no longer have that asset either, which is why I want you to own a home, but I don't want you to stretch yourself so thin that you have no more money to invest to own the home. In fact, I would prefer you go out and buy a rental property before you go out and buy a home to live in yourself. But this is where I want you to understand, your wealth is built here with assets. Yes, we will see another market crash again. Yes, we will see the economy slow down again. Yes, we will see asset prices again. But that does not mean you should not own assets. I want you to own these instead of stretching yourself so thin just to own or have these. Sure, it's good to work on your salary. Sure, it's good to work on your savings. But especially here when it comes to your liabilities, you can't be stretching yourself thin to just own or have these before you have these. And when it comes to your salaries and your savings, I want you to understand that at some point you're going to have to work to convert these to these because this is where your wealth is built. You're never going to become rich through your salary alone. You're never going to become rich through your savings alone. You're going to have to convert these into true assets if you ever want to become wealthy for actual wealth. Now, of course, I'll be talking more about this on the Wealth Building Workshop on February 6th. I hope to see you there, but this is where I want you to understand how our economic system is working. And if you'd like to join me on February 6th, remember I got the link for you down in the description below. This gave the ability for the Federal Reserve Bank now to essentially print money out of thin air because the government doesn't need more wealth, it doesn't need more gold to justify more money printing. So now, if the government wants to go out and spend money, if they want to go out and do a trillion dollar infrastructure package or spending bill or finance, whatever they want to do, 